Hi everyone and welcome to our discussion today on this uh, topic accounting for convertible debt. Uh, we must be aware what exactly is the idea of a convertible debt. So if I just were to quickly uh, make it clear in terms of what a convertible debt is that uh, a company, let's say company X issues bonds or debt or any any such kind of uh, you know uh, commercial papers and and uh, gives the holder of such bonds or debt to convert their bonds into shares in future right so that is something which is the option the conversion option exists right now let's try to understand why would probably we won't even talk about the accounting part of it because at the point in time we are saying that we are issuing debt so it is as good as a liability But this is likely to be converted into shares. So in future, it is there's a likelihood that it, will, it might become equity, right? So let's let's look at it basically. What are the features of a convertible debt, and how probably the accounting for convertible debt might differ as against. Uh, the accounting that we do for let's say a pure debt right without any conversion feature right. let us say that there is a, a company x which carries you know uh, and let's say there is a company y so there are two companies company x and company y so they are similar businesses Maybe for the sake of it, even you know, even with respect to the size, right? Now we are saying that uh, company X is uh, planning to issue debt which is without conversion feature, right? So let's say this is coming at hundred million dollars. Are you fine with that? Let us say, considering the the uh, riskiness, right? Considering the riskiness uh, with respect to the business in which company X operates, with respect to the gearing, with respect to whatever you know factors which influence the the cost of capital. Let us say this comes at ten percent, right? So what we are saying is company X has issued some debt at $100 million, such kind of businesses with respect to the business risk that they operate under the normal cost of capital is 10% right? But let us say I am looking at company Y, company Y says it also wants to issue Hundred million dollar of debt. So it wants to raise money to the extent of hundred million dollar. But now here they are saying there is a conversion option also available, right? Conversion option to the investors, the people who have invested in the bonds of company. Why? They have a choice. Investors have an option to convert their bonds into the shares of company Y later. Right? Of course company X did not have this conversion option but company Y's bonds have a conversion option embedded within themselves and that is where we try to understand why probably the accounting may vary for these bonds as issued by company X versus the money which is raised by company Y in form of a convertible dimension.
right? We are saying that here we say investors have an option to convert their bonds into the shares of company Y later. My question is this: Why would the investors in company Y's bonds convert their bonds into shares. Why would they want to do that? Or when would they want to do that? We are simply saying they would only do it under one condition where we say that shares offer higher returns at the time of conversion, right? That is the only reason why probably the investors in company Y would like to convert their bonds into shares because they know that shares are offering higher returns. Everybody is being rational. Everybody is being a very rational advisor in that perspective. So if that happens, we are saying the companies which carry a similar risk, right? So we are saying that company X and company Y are similar, you know, carry a similar risk, they're the same industry, kind of competitors with each other. And if the business risk, financial risk and whatever risk we want to talk about, if that is same as it applies for company X, as it applies for company Y, if company X is likely to offer lower returns without conversion because we are saying that investors will convert their bonds into shares if the returns are higher and that is a likelihood right so sincerely of course there is a possibility which exists that the shares in company Y under this conversion option may offer a higher return so automatically company Y on the convertible bonds may only offer a lower fixed interest rate as compared to company Y because there is no likelihood that company X will as compared to company X is verified because for company X investors there is no likelihood to have a higher return coming in it's purely debt without any conversion feature but in case of company Y there is a possibility there is a likelihood that interest rates or the value of shares may be higher later so what company Y might tell its investors look you want to invest in my bonds tomorrow these might be converted into shares and you will do that if the share prices are higher so what I would want to offer to you is a lower fixed interest rate until the conversion period or until the point of conversion or until the time this option can be exercised and that is why or that is where you realize that a convertible debt is offering a reduced interest cost as against a debt which is purely a debt in its you know uh, in its spirit so we are saying that this is without conversion and this is with conversion option 
right? Are you fine with that? So first of all, what we want to understand here is that any convertible debenture is likely to offer a lower interest rate as compared to a debenture, a debt or a bond without any conversion option. And the moment I say so, I would start giving regard to a couple of more things which are one here the cost of capital is higher as compared to the cost of capital as offered by or as applicable to company Y so automatically the first instance the value of business of company Y will be considered to be higher since the cost of capital is lower Right? What we simply say, if the interest cost or the cost of capital is lower for a competitor, automatically the value of the business will increase. But this cannot happen or this should not happen because ideally both the companies are having a similar business and merely there exists a conversion option. You cannot say that the value of the company Y has increase just because of the gearing right likewise we are saying so this is something which is theoretically you know theoretically uh, possible but in reality it might not be a case because those kind of arbitrage would simply get away you cannot just keep on issuing you know convertible option just because in the future you would land up paying something extra in form of those shares which are likely to be issued in future that is one part. Secondly, the debt issued by company Y is not entirely debt. So, of course, we are saying that there is also an equity feature embedded in that. There is also an equity feature embedded in that which means that ideally the amount of of 100 million comprises of a liability portion and it also comprises of an equity portion right so something that we want to really take away here is First of all, you cannot say just because you are issuing convertible debentures, the value of your business has become higher. And secondly, what you issued, what you raised, the instrument, the, uh, the papers through which you raise the money, we are saying that this is not purely debt. There is some component of equity involved as well. Right? And that is where we further going here into the framework of the accounting standards where we say liability is nothing else but present value of cash flows whatever you are supposed to pay is going to be the value of liability that you are supposed to show in your books today right so let us say if the conversion period, the tenure after which the conversion can take place is let us say three years, we would simply say here as far as the company Y's liability value is concerned, we are saying that the cash flows are there is an interest of 8 million that is nothing else but 100 million into 8 percent for year 1 likewise for year 2 there is an interest and in the year 3 there will be interest and principal of 100 plus 8 which is 108 million right but then if I were to look at the discounted value or the present value, my discount rate will of course be 10% which is the pure 
debt rate without any conversion option right so what i am supposed to look at is this 8 million will be discounted by the discount rate of 10% so that is going to be 1.10 to the power 1 for the year 2 it is 1.10 to the power 3 2 sorry and for the final year it is going to be 108 divided by 1.10 to the power 3 which of course will be a little lesser value than 100 million you simply may say 88108 discounted at 10% for each year the overall value is certainly going to be less than 100 million that is going to be the liability portion and the balance amount will become your equity portion of course it can be calculated easily but let us say if this rate or this calculation comes at, I don't know about the exact value but let's say for the sake of it we are saying so this was eight percent we are saying that the liability portion is 90 million I'm not sure about that we haven't done the calculations here and the equity portions comes to 10 million which is the balancing figure we are saying now from an accounting entity's perspective debit money raised debit back credit liability 90 million so you raised 100 and credit equity 10 million right now the thing that you want to remember here is this 90 million reflects pure liability component which means that the way I am going to showcase in my books that I have raised 90 million of debt and the interest rate applicable is again 10% and all of a sudden you start seeing that this becomes a comparable value you raise 100 if you were x you are paying 10% or you are showing an interest cost of 10% is not worth the payment anymore likewise if your company Y you are now raising 90 because the present value of the cash outflow is 90 and the interest cost attributable is also going to be 10% thereby ensuring that the value of the two businesses is same, it does not change the value. I may even say the cost of capital, of course, becomes same for the two businesses, right? So, that is how you look at why probably we would need to understand the accounting part of it when you look at the relevance of convertible debentures. So, that's something which is one of the most uh, uh, I think relevant yet of course uh, you know logical uh, you know areas under the uh, financial instruments in these accounting standards here right so that is something which I want to kind of discuss here briefly in terms of how should we be dealing with the accounting for financial instruments under the relevant accounting standards great then thank you very much